Hello there, programmers, and welcome to another episode. I am your host, Chris Franklin. So what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into the world of Python GUI development. Uh, but today we're going to be using Qt6, which, as of the time of this recording, just came out a couple days ago. Uh, along with the official release of Qt6 was also the release of PySide 6, which is Qt for Python 6, okay? Um, PySide uh, comes from the name, uh, Nokia used, used, owns the, the Qt, or did at the time, and for some reason called it PySide. It's something in Finnish. I don't know what side means, but it means, uh, what, what PySide is the library that is officially known as Qt for Python. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to learn how to build a basic window using Qt6 and Python. Okay. So to do this, um, let's start with uh, a virtual environment. So I've already got one set up here. Uh, hopefully you know how to do that already. If not, go read a couple tutorials on basic Python because you do need to know Python before you really get started in the development world of uh, GUI uh, application development. So we're going to do pip install and we're going to install uh, PySide 6. Uh, the previous version was PySide 2 uh, and we jumped all the way up to PySide 6. Uh, they're very bad at numbering, but uh, PySide 2 supported Qt5 and PySide 6 supports Qt6. Okay, so here we are, PySide 6, and as you can see, this is brand new release 6.0.0. Uh, your version will probably be newer than that, um, but at the time of this recording, this is the version that's available. All right, once we have that going, let's go ahead and create a new Python file. We'll just call this main.py. Inside of our main.py, we're going to go ahead and import everything we're going to use for this tutorial. I'm going to bring in just a couple of features of PySide 6 just so that we can see some of the fun stuff that you can do with this. We'll dig into more details and further tutorials about all of these individual th uh, pieces and how to actually use them uh, full on. But for today, we're just going to see a really basic introduction uh, into the world of Qt. Okay, so we... Uh, Inside of PySide 6, we're going to use the Qt widgets. Uh, this correlates directly to the C++ uh, classes. This is a wrapper around the C++ uh, Qt library, okay? And what we need here is a Q application. We need Q widget, Q push button, and Q message box, okay? And we're going to set up our... Uh, we'll just call this example, and we're going to have this inherit from Q widget. Okay. Uh, Q widgets are kind of the bare bones base widget on which all of the other widgets are built. These are pre built, ready to use um, tools and utilities that you can just bring into your projects. Uh, things like buttons, message boxes, all of these things are built off of the Q widget base class. Um, you can also in here do this as a, a Q main window if you want to have some additional functionality built into it. Uh, but we're, we'll get into that in the next tutorial to see how to use the Q main window. So for this, all we're going to do now is we're just going to pass so that we can set up the basics of having everything up and running. Okay. Uh, and we're going to set up our run function. Now here we're going to set up a Q application and I'm going to pass in. Um, an empty array, you can pass in all the system arcs that get passed in on the command line if you want to do that. Um, whatever, uh, These are all the arguments that, that, that get passed in. But for now, we're just going to say no arguments get passed through. And we're going to set up our example. This is the widget that we're setting up here. And then we're going to say app.exec. Now, because exec is a keyword inside of Python, uh, both PySide and PyQt use exec underscore. So uh, all of this is identical except for the library we're pulling in here. Okay, so you could switch out PySide 6 with PyQt. Um, and right now only PyQt 5 is out. So they're a little bit behind the game. Um, as opposed to when Qt5 came out, PyQt 5 came out two full years before PySide 2 came out. So... Um, it's time that since this is the official implementation of Qt in Python, 
Uh, I figured I'd start with it this time. Okay. And now um, let's go ahead and do if dunder name oh, equals our dunder main. And we will run this. Okay. So super straightforward, super simple. Um, if you click the little run button here, things will run, but nothing will happen. We won't get a window. We won't see anything. Uh, that's because at this point, all we're doing is running an empty application. Okay, so I have to double kill it uh, because there's nothing to actually close. Uh, this doesn't do anything unless you define some, th some things inside of here. So let's define some things. Inside of here, we're going to replace the pass with def uh, dunder init. Oh my goodness, what did I just do there? I auto-completed something really weird. All right, init. And we'll set up this class, and what we'll do is we'll call super init. Um, we just want to make sure we uh, everything that the queue widget does, we do. Okay? And then let's do a setup function. Okay? So we're going to call self.setup and then define setup. All right. Inside of here, this is where we're going to actually build all of our widgets. Everything that we're going to put into the Q widget itself gets defined inside of this setup. Okay. So I'm going to create a button. We're going to say this is a quit button, a Q push button, and we're going to force quit. Okay. And then we have to pass in the parrot. So um, Q push button, the way this works is you pass in the label, and then your second parameter is a reference to the parent. In this case, we're going to put it onto the base class here, the Q widget class. So when we set all this up, you'll now see there's a uh, push button being defined in here. Let's set up a couple other things that we need. Um, we'll talk about sockets and slots and uh, messages and all of that. Uh, in another tutorial, but know that what I'm doing here is I am inside of the clicked slot. I am connecting a new event. Okay. And that event is going to be Q application dot instance. Oh my goodness. That, that strange thing happening here instance, and we're going to say quit. Okay. So we're connecting into the slot We're we're manually connecting into the, into that clicked slot and we're passing uh, we're giving it a function to actually call which in this case is going to be main queue application dot instance dot quit so we are going to actually terminate the instance whenever this force button is clicked okay uh, the other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to resize this button we want to make sure it uh, it is set to the proper size whenever the window changes size so we're going to say button quit size hint. Okay. So resize the button whenever things are properly laid out. And then we're going to move this button. Let's move it down to uh, 9100. How about that? Okay. Works for me. Now, uh, the other thing we're going to do is set up our geometry. This is how we define the... Uh, X and Y location on the screen that with the window gets created, as well as the height, uh, the width and height. So we're going to say it's 200 wide by 150 high. And um, what else can we do? Oh, let's do set window title. And uh, this is our window example. Okay, great. Wonderful. And the last thing we need to do is show ourselves show yourself you know uh, like the disney famous disney movie okay all right uh def close event um yeah let's see so we'll we'll do this here pi side six qt gui yeah i think we're gonna have to bring this guy in um let's do this Let's say from pyside 6qt GUI import q close event. Ooh, there we go. Let's type check this. All right, there we go. Yep. Okay, close event. Yes, yes, yes. 
here. All we're, we don't need all that extra goodness on the end here. We can just come in and set up what we're going to do. All right, what are we going to do when we receive the close event? Uh, we're going to say Q message box. We're going to pose a question, and we're going to mount it as the parent is going to be self. So the Q widget that this is all wrapped in. This is our message, and are you sure you want to quit? There we go. Pretty straightforward. Uh, let's take this on to the next line. Now, here, um, this part of the message box, we're giving it what options are in here. We're going to have yes and no, with the default being Q message box dot no. Okay, that's it. That's all that is. So we're setting up a Q message box. We're having it ask. A, it's going to be a question box, so it'll get uh, some styling based off of that. Here's the title. This is the parent. This is the actual question that gets asked in the message box. These are the options that show up, and this is the default option. Okay. That's a lot. Uh, we'll dive really deep into message boxes in another tutorial. Uh, but now we're going to take whatever come, came out of that, so the yes or no, and we're going to say, if it's yes, what are we going to do? We're going to say, we accept you, event. Otherwise, uh, we're going to say, event, ignore. Okay, that's it. So this gives us uh, our widget, shows it, and sets its geometry and location. Let's run this and see what happens. So if I hit play, um, well, I have two screens here, and this showed up at 100, 100 of my other screen. So let me bring this, there we go, into view so that we can see what it looks like. Look at this. Now we have a force quit button, and we have our X button. So let's play with this a little bit. Now that we have this kind of showing, we can see where our button is actually showing on the screen. It's at 90, 100. This is 200 wide by 150 tall. So you can see we moved down 90 over 100. So here we are. All right. Um, if I force quit, it pops up the message. Are you sure you want to quit? Yes or no? If I click the X button here, it pops up the, the message. So we have this uh clicked event that we're listening to but we also have the close event itself what happens is when we fire on this when this button clicks it fires our queue application instance quit which is the same event that gets fired when we click the x button here okay so by by clicking all of that um we're we're basically creating the exact same event coming through the whole system okay so if we say yes the application shuts down and exits, and there we go. All right, so that is a really basic application. You can get started with uh, Qt6 now if you want to uh, start using the PySide 6 library. Uh, there's a lot to it, so um, dig into the documentation, learn everything you can on it. I'll be publishing these tutorials as quickly as possible uh, so that we can... Um, start to learn together how to use QT6 versus QT5. All right, I look forward to seeing you in future tutorials. Have a great day.